Hey there everyone, do you want to turn images like these into a surreal photoshop composition like this one? Then fasten your seat belts and I will take you on a ride through the parallel worlds. This photo manipulation is pretty simple and fun to do, so I hope you will like it. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you must have also seen that I created an animated version of it in photoshop, but I won't be showing it in this video as it will take too long and creating an animation tutorial also takes a great deal of time and effort. So if you really want to see how I created this animation effect and that too in photoshop, do let me know in the comments below and maybe if I get 50 requests from you all, I will do the animation tutorial. Alright then, without wasting any more of your time, let's create. Well this composition was part of a contest, so all the images used are paid stocks, but if you want to create something similar, I'm pretty sure you can find similar images in free stock websites like Onsplash, Pexels, Pixabay and so on. I started with sketching out the idea, but this is totally optional and you can skip it. I love doing traditional paintings, so I felt like flexing my finger muscles a bit. Once that is done, I brought in the image of the traveler. I generally keep using smart objects as they help me correct anything in the future quickly. Now I went into the smart object and quickly selected him using photoshop's subject selection tool. It did a pretty nice job. I scaled him and fit him properly. Then it's time to create the cliff. Now I thought about only using the stock images that were provided for the contest. So I built the cliff from scratch using this image. This is totally overkill and you should simply use a stock photo of a cliff instead. I started aligning the rocks to the cliff that I painted previously. I used the clone stamp tool to sample areas that I thought fit best with the shape. I also used free transform tools like scale, distort and warp. Once I was somewhat satisfied. I started painting the shadows on the rocks, making the cliff look realistic. I painted on a layer with the blending mode set to multiply for the shadows and used a dark grey color. The light should be coming from the top, so I aligned the shadows accordingly. Now it's time to bring in the mountains. I quickly went into the smart object containing the mountain image and used photoshop's sky selection tool to quickly select and mask out the sky. I used the rectangular to polar filter under distort to warp the image into a circle. Now this filter works well with stretched out images. It's like bending a rod into a circle. The longer the rod is, the better circle it forms. So I again went into the smart object containing the mountain, I cropped it doubled the width of the canvas, duplicated the image and flipped it horizontally. And now I have a long stretched out mountain image. Now I came back to my main composition and applied the filter, polar coordinates, selected rectangular to polar, you can find it under filter, distort. Then it's a matter of free transforming, scaling and squeezing until it looks good. I also rotated it until it fits with the perfect shapes that I was looking for. Once satisfied, I removed any unwanted areas and warped it further to my liking. Then I added the city image and did the same mountain image treatment. I doubled the canvas along the width, duplicated the image, flipped it horizontally, matched the seams and then applied the rectangular to polar coordinates filter from filter distort. Then scaled it into position and I also feathered out the edges a bit by painting with black on the layer mask. That will help blend the concentric rings better. I duplicated it 3 more times and filled up the canvas by varying their sizes. Also at the same time I rotated the copies to create some variety. Along with that. I made the nearest ring a bit darker and added a haze on the faraway ones to create the sense of atmospheric perspective and depth. I also have a very detailed video on this topic, the link should be in the description section, you can check it out if you want. I 
I warped the mountains a bit to create some interesting shapes and fill up the bottom of the canvas. Then added a brightness and contrast adjustment layer as a clipping mask and quickly darkened it up. I did the same with the cliff to darken it up a bit as well. Then I took one of the smoke brushes provided in the contest assets and created some clouds. This will help separate various objects like the cliff from the mountains and the mountains from the portal. It will also add up to the surreal feeling of the composition. I took some dark colors for the corner clouds whereas used light gray for the ones in the center. Next I added one of the space textures to add some stars. I changed the blending mode to hard light and also added some brightness contrast and hue saturation adjustment layers to darken it up and tweak the tone to my liking. Added a black mask to hide everything and paint it with white only in the areas needed with a soft round brush. I kept moving it often to find the perfect part of the texture that matches the composition. I mixed in some color lookup tables to add some quick color grading to the image. At first, I added a 3 strip and changed the blending mode to color. Then I added Fuji F125 Kodak 2393, changed the blending mode to color as well. I also added some noiseless texture just to see how it's all looking. Then it's time to paint some highlights on the traveler. For that, I added a hue saturation adjustment layer as a clipping mask. I clicked the colorize checkbox, took some shade in the pale blue area, and filled the layer mask with black. Then, with a soft round brush and color white, I started painting the edge highlights. I also sped up the process by adding some quick edge highlights using the inner shadow technique. I do have a detailed video on this topic as well. The link should be in the description section. You can check that out if you want. I kept manually painting the highlights on the hue saturation layer as needed to fine tune things. Next I added some gas shadow of the traveler. For that on a blank layer set to multiply blending mode, I took some dark grey color and painted with a soft round brush. I also clipped another blank layer set to multiply on top of the traveler and painted some form shadow on it. There should be some highlights on the mountains as well. For that, I used a hue saturation layer with the colorized checkbox clicked and kept the shade to some pale blue color. Then on the inverted layer mask, I painted with white to reveal the highlights. Well, I generally use a solid color fill with linear dodges blending mode for highlights and I have a very detailed video for that as well. I'll also put the link in the description section. For this highlight layer, I also played with the blended section a bit so that the underlying dark areas become visible and it looks a whole lot realistic. I made some more adjustments to the space texture overlay and tweaked the adjustment layers clip to it. The values were not that significant and it all boils down to personal preferences. Next I started fine tuning the lights and shadow on the cliff. I quickly added a rim light using the inner shadow technique. This technique is fairly quick and gives good results for edge lighting on distant objects. You can check out my detailed video on this topic from the description section if you want to learn more. I also fine tuned the highlights by using a hue saturation layer and manually painted on the inverted layer mask with white. I also used the same highlights layer to add some light reflections on the rocks and make the form clearer. I quickly painted some debris hanging from the floating rock using a small crunch brush and with an almost black grey color. Then it's time to add some overall toning. I created a blank layer on the very top and changed the blending mode to soft light. I took a pale yellow color and gave some depths of color at the center. The idea is to create a light halo at the center while the surroundings should be dark and somewhat in a violet tone. So the yellow and the violet combination should also look nice as they are complementary colors. I decided to add some rainbow lights coming out from the portal just to add up to the surreal effect. With a soft round brush, I quickly painted a rainbow, taking all the 7 colors. Then I hit a free transform and warped the heck out of it. I tried to give a feeling that the rainbow is spewing out from the portal. 
it's just a matter of trial and error to see what works best here. I made two more copies of it and also warped them to create different variations. These rainbows will also add a much needed dash of colors to the somewhat muted tones of the composition. I changed the blending mode to overlay and reduced the opacity to make the effect subtle. I created another blank layer in the blending mode of soft light like before and painted with some similar colors just to intensify the tones. I painted with some yellows at the center and also added some yellow reflections on the rocks of the cliff. I dropped in another space texture just to add some touch of color and stars around the traveler. I kept the blending mode to screen and also played with the blend if section to remove all dark areas and only keep the bright stars. I also masked it at places not required. I was a bit picky with the red colors in the rainbows, so I added some selective color adjustment layer as clipping masks on top of them and boosted the yellows in the red channel to shift them a bit to the orange side. And finally, it's time for the final color grading. I added a curves adjustment layer and went to the blue channel. I added a point at the very center and dropped the curve in the highlights area to introduce some yellows. That in turn lifted the curve slightly at the shadow region and added some extra blues in the dark areas. I also added a vibrance adjustment layer and boosted the vibrance a bit. Then added a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and increased the overall contrast as well. Next it's time to add some green. For that, I created a blank clear and went to edit, fill and filled it with 50% grey. Then I reset the foreground and background colors to default black and white colors and went to filter, noise, add noise and added some black and white noise of about 15%. They are very sharp, so I added a little bit of Gaussian blur of about 1 pixels. Then I changed the blending mode of the layer to soft light and reduced the opacity to around 50%. And just like a little bit of garnishing on top, I added some glitchy noise textures to make it more interesting. They were kept with the blending mode of lighten and the opacity was reduced to 50%. So here goes the final result. Let me know in the comments if you like it or not. And if you want me to create the animation tutorial of the same, be sure to let me know in the comments as well. I'll create the video if I get 50 requests from you all. Alright then, I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If so, be sure to like the video, share it with your friends and if you are liking my overall content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel that would greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I'll see you in the next one and till then, enjoy creating.